This is my granddaughter Tracy. Tracy, Tracy. Hello. Hello. I'm Jason. Hi. Hi. Granddaughter Dion. Granddaughter Christina. Hi. Hello, the president. Hi. My daughter Mom Glenn. Hi. This is Kelly Thomas. Chloe Thomas. Barry Thomas. Hello there. Hi. Hello. Did you say hello to the president there again? Yes, I did. Please do. crowded, as you can see, and I knew that Danny has a big family and a lot of friends, and then I figured out what to do. I just called the staff together and said just four words, make room for Daddy. <laughs> January 6, 1914. And around here, that makes you a young whippersnapper. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you became a candy butcher in a vaudeville house and first felt the lure of the stage. And soon you were earning pocket money by clowning at banquets. At 20, you were hosting a Michigan radio show, and at 22, you married Rosemary. And just a few months later, however, you lost your job. It was the middle of the Depression and work was hard to come by. You were forced to consider giving up show business and in desperation you prayed to St. Jude, the patron saint of hopeless causes. I find myself praying to him once in a while. <laughs> the very next day, you were offered a radio job in Chicago and a job at Shea Lee, and your career began a steep climb which has never ended. The Chicago radio serials led to nightclub performances, USO tours, and movies no one will ever forget. The Unfinished Dance, 1947. The Big City, 1948. The Jazz Singer, 1953. I've been getting films like that, I'd still be in Hollywood. <laughs> phase of your career with a certain show called Make Room for Daddy, which in 1957 became the Danny Thomas Show. At one point, your program was seen by more than 40 million Americans a week, and you ruled the airwaves as the undisputed king of television comedy. When your show finished its run, you remained active in television through your production company. And today, you continue to manage that company and make frequent show business appearances. You've made millions laugh, Danny. America will always be grateful. <coughs> Yet the award you will receive in a moment is not for your show business career, but not for your, but for your, quote, humanitarian efforts. And it goes back to that prayer to St. Jude those many years ago. St. Jude interceded with the Almighty on your behalf, and you've been thanking him ever since by funding 
and working ceaselessly for the St. Mary Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. St. Jude Hospital, which specializes in childhood cancer research, is supported primarily by funds from volunteer contributions and grants. Proceeds from your concerts and commercials go directly to the hospital, and every summer the hospital hosts a week-long <coughs> golf tournament, the Danny Thomas Golf Classic, using most of the proceeds to help fund St. Jude Hospital's important work. Danny, you once remarked, they say I'm a sentimentalist, and I am. I'm so sentimental, I cry at basketball games. <laughs> well, your life, however, bespeaks no mere sentiment, but a deep and abiding love, a love for your God, your country, your family, and your children, the thousands of them who benefited <coughs> from St. Jude Hospital. Danny Thomas, it's my high honor to present you with the Congressional Gold Medal and to tell you that on this day, America says, we love you. We love you right back. It's a great day. It's a great day for our family. And to my other family, the American Lebanese Syrian Associated Charities. What a great day. Did you ever dream back in 1957 that this could happen to us? But it has happened. And to the great benefactors of St. Jude's who are here, Ms. Joan Kroc, who the boss lady of the Padre, <coughs> makes all those hamburgers. Big contributors. And Frank O'Brien from the uh, uh, I always want to say Federal Express. Uh, American Express, and never leave home. I never leave home without a him. And, his money. and Don Collender, and the great Collender Pines, all great contributors, and all the contributors. And I particularly want to thank Congressman Nick Rahal, who was the catalyst to which all of this happened, and of course, the fellow members of Congress, came along. It took a time, but why not? They tell me they don't do this very often. I'm eternally grateful to God and to you, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, and to my fellow Americans for presenting me this high honor in my lifetime, particularly in the presence of my grandchildren. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 